Hi and welcome again to the channel. Um, this is a special uh, screencast because this is an announcement of the release of the new Padre on Strawberry uh, Windows installer. Uh, originally when I started this, uh, well I didn't know what, what, what's going to happen, but uh, I, uh, last month I, I decided that I was going to release uh, this package once a month, but because of some exciting new features that came up, uh, I decided that I can't wait really more anymore, so I wanted to release it. Uh, so here it is and you can start downloading and uh, start using it. Um, I would like to show you now a couple of things that are new in this distribution so you can uh, see whether it's interesting for you as well to try it out. Uh, first of all how to get uh, the, the distribution. So you can go to the website of Padre, padre.perlide.org and then on the main page you have all these uh, promotional texts but you can probably not interested because you're already convinced that you want it. Uh, so you click on the download link and here uh, some more text about what kind of uh, packages modules are already included. Uh, there is the release notes, whatever, you don't care about that. Uh, what's important for you is this link where you can click on, it, on that link and then you can download the actual, actual distribution, the installer, which is pretty big, it's 75 uh, megabyte, uh, but it, can, it, it contains quite a lot of things. So once you downloaded it and you clicked uh, several times and installed and everything that you usually do in Windows, uh, you can go to the start menu, uh, all programs, and then you will have a uh, strawberry pearl menu item, probably depending on what you picked. And here inside you will see lots of lots of new icons. Now this is not new for those who are using standard strawberry pearl, but in the previous version of uh, Padron Strawberry we didn't have the, all these icons, so they are new. And there are some icons that are actually quite new for everyone, uh, especially these, the games subdirectory. So in there you will have three icons. Uh, th the middle one here is a link to the website of the SDL Pearl, uh, that the technology that uh, the games are built in. And here is the Frozen Bubble. Frozen Bubble is the well-known game uh, which was originally written uh, in Pearl, and this is actually the original a uh, code, uh, a newer version of it, and uh, now, oh yeah, it's starting to play, as you can uh, see and, and here, uh, you can press enter here and another enter, and probably you uh, can all kind of uh, things to, to, cha to change, and here, um, well, you move uh, with the arrows and then hit the balls and they fall down, and that's a great game, and I'm a really good player, I mean, almost, yeah, I'm quite good, you see, yeah, Next level. So I could play here quite a long, long time, uh, and you probably enjoy it very much. But I think uh, I would like to show something uh, else. So I quit this game. Okay, bye bye. Yeah. So I quit this game, and I would like to show you the another one, the other game. Uh, the other game is uh, here as well. It's called Zombies, uh, which is a, a game. Uh, there, here, there. You are this redhead girl, and there are zombies running after you, and you have to shout, shoot them down or real, they will eat you. And the fun part, I mean, oh, so yeah, they ate me. So besides the fact that you are a red-headed girl and zombies are after you, it's actually written in Portuguese. So you will have to deal with that, but I think after the zombies it's, it's gonna be okay for you. Uh, now quitting the game is another adventure because you can't just uh, press escape, it doesn't work. You have to press enter to restart the game and then, then you can press escape and then it, it quits. So that's gonna be fun for everyone. Uh, and if you really want to, to make changes, then uh, it's open source, so you can uh, go to the GitHub repository and uh, start fixing it. And well, who knows, no, who knows what? You might have a really great game at uh, one point. Maybe it even can speak in English or, or what, Hungarian, whatever. Um, so what else is there? As I mentioned, there is uh, an interesting feature of uh, Padre. So Padre uh, is going to be released, the new version 0 0.86 is going to be released uh, quite soon, uh, in a couple of days, and it will have a new feature that's extremely surprising for anyone who's using Perl in the last four years, because so far that was the major issue of Padre, that we didn't have correct syntax highlighting for the defined OR uh, that came out in 5.10. And that the reason is, is because we were using the Scintilla editor uh, widget and uh, the highlighter in there, and because we were using a really old version of it, for a uh, long story, it's through the WX uh, bindings and so on. So because of that, uh, we didn't have correct syntax highlighting. Now lately, uh, Ahmed Zawabi made some heroic work 
and uh, he ported actually created a binding directly to Sun Scintilla. Uh, it's called WX Scintilla in, in Perl, and uh, made some changes to Perl to Padre uh, that will come out in 086 that will allow you to use it. Now, because it's not released yet, I decided, but it's an important feature that I decided I backported it and I put it back into the 0 0.86, 84 release of Padre and it has never been released to the public really, it's only to this in the uh, SVN repository, but it's actually included in this distribution. So in the coming days, if you want to try this, this is the only way you can do it. So go ahead and download it. Now, how does it work? Uh, you launch Padre. And um, once you have the, the editor open, you, you open some Perl script. So, for example, uh, in the examples directory, let's open this, this script. Um, I'm not really interested in the, in, in the actual what's in there. What I would like to write is uh, this defined or, uh, which as you can see, the highlighting, I hope you can see the highlighting is really broken. So this is black and then it's red. It doesn't recognize that we are talking about a, a defined or. A variable. So we have to enable the, the Cintilla, new Scintilla highlighter. The way to do it is to go to the Tools menu, uh, Preferences. Uh, we don't have a, a checkbox for this here as far as I know. So we go to the Advanced uh, Options there. Uh, we can type in uh, Scintilla, we start to type in and then you ha here is the menu option. Uh, and as you can see it's false, so by default it doesn't, it's not used. Uh, I turn it on, uh, setting it true save it and then it still not doesn't work because you need to restart Padre uh, in order for this uh, specific feature to take effect. So I close uh, Padre and uh, start it again uh, in the same way and uh, once it opens, well I hate this feature that doesn't remember the, the correct, the, the same file that was uh, opened already. So I go to recent files and uh, I open the, that file and as you can see here it's already uh, doing the syntax highlighting correctly. By the way, if you also hate this, that the uh, Padre doesn't open the, the last files that were have been open before you closed it, you can go to the tools, preferences again, and here there is the open files entry, and here, yeah, that's what it says. So you will open a new file every time uh, when you open Padre, but you can say, set it to last, which will open the last files that have been open or there is also session management that I won't want to go into this now because that's not the, what, what we are talking about. Um, anyway, so that's a, that's a really nice feature of Padre now uh, that it can actually uh, do correct syntax highlighting. So welcome to Perl 510. That's great. Uh, so what else? Um, there are a couple of other features. Let's uh, go back to this website because it has uh, explanations of what kind of things are new. Let's go to the release notes so I can remember. Oh yes, so uh, CPAN Reporter. CPAN Reporter and the, this module, which I can't read out, uh, are the tools, uh, one of the set of the tools to allow you to report, to send out test reports to the CPAN testers. So this website, probably you know, this is the CPAN testers reports website, where people who install CPAN modules and decide to send out the reports. The reports are collected in this, this place and then you can uh, see them and uh, it's great. So in order to turn this on, uh, you have to in install various modules, but these are already coming in this distribution and you will have to configure it uh, so it will send out in your, it will be turned on and it will send out in, uh, in your name. So if you go to the CPAN testers org website, and uh, scroll down, then there is a part called become a tester, which links to the wiki, and uh, I don't go into the details now, that's gonna be a separate uh, screencast probably, uh, but you can go there and, and read uh, how to set it up, and then you can start sending out test reports, which is great, thanks. What else? Uh, oh yeah, so text, CSV access, just to read, uh, CS read or write CSV files, net telnet, in case you want to connect to an unsecured Unix machine, or there are all these routers and um, and bridges and whatnot that are you can configure them via a Telnet interface, and in many times you need to use them uh, for testing or to configure these devices. So Net Telnet is a great module for that. Uh, App CPAN Outdated uh, allows me to actually check which modules need to be updated uh, for the next version of this. Uh, 
um, package, but it can be used by anyone. It's a command line tool that will show you what, um, which modules are outdated in your installation. Uh, template Toolkit. Template Toolkit uh, will help me write, uh, or anyone actually, uh, help write uh, a more complex applications, web applications. So Dancer, that was, has been included in, uh, in the earlier version, actually it, has, it was upgraded in this version. Uh, but Dancer comes with a really simple template, tool, template system that doesn't even have loops and stuff like this. And uh, now that you have Template Toolkit installed, it's quite easy to start building complex web applications on this distribution. Win32 GUI test. That's a nice module in, uh, to allow you to write all kind of automation for uh, desktop applications. So it allows you to click on, use the mouse, or drag the mouse, um, automatically, obviously, without you touching the mouse or kicking on the keyboards. Uh, and uh, so you can automate task, it can be used for testing or for automatic installations or stuff like this. And then, as I mentioned, there is SDL with the games and a couple of games that were installed. Um, a couple of modules have been upgraded um, and that's it, basically. So I really hope that uh, some of you will uh, try it out, uh, download it and try it and uh, provide feedback. How is the new distribution? I really hope that there are not too many new bugs uh, in there. Um, and I hope you enjoyed uh, the screencast and see you next time.